Hey folks, this video is brought to you by my pals at Bob's Watches. Now look, Rolex watches have become an investment class, a wearable, usable investment class. And in fact, I bought my very first Rolex watch from Bob's Watches. It was a vintage Pepsi GMT, and I sold it back to Bob's at a 50% profit two years later. Bob's has a bunch of different brands, from Breitling to Omega to Panerai and more, but they highly specialize in Rolex watches and carry one of the largest inventories of Rolex watches anywhere in the world. They have a Kelly Blue Book-like pricing tool, so if you have a watch you'd like to sell or trade, you can find out easily what it's worth. Whether you're buying or selling, Bob's will ship your watch to and from you overnight for free, making the buying process as seamless as possible. Whether you're buying to wear, buying to collect, or looking to cash in on your wearable investment, Bob's is the place to do it. And if you go to bobswatches.com slash TST, Bob's will give you $100 off your first purchase through any of their inventory. I've had a great experience with these guys for many, many years. My pal Spike has bought and sold a bunch of watches from them as well, and we are super happy to take them on as a sponsor for 2021 and beyond. So if you're interested in your first Rolex or your 10th Rolex, or you have extra watches to sell, look at Bob's first and go to bobswatches.com slash TST to cash in on that free 100 bucks from Bob's for your first purchase. All right, all right, all right. Good morning, everybody. And by the time I'm saying good morning to you, it's almost two months from when I'm saying good morning to this camera, because today is July 20-something, and uh, this video is embargoed until September 10th. Uh, it's a very long lead, as they say. Uh, but Super, super excited to drive this car. So glad I could get in it. Uh, been waiting for it for a long time. The Lexus IS500. Uh, they probably could have made the decision to call it an ISF if they wanted to make the bodywork a little more aggressive or do some other things besides really just change the engine. Um, but uh, regardless of the nomenclature, the IS500 is what it sounds like. Lexus's a small rear-wheel drive sedan that's been on sale since 2013 uh, with the 5-liter 32-valve dual overhead cam VVTi V8 making 472 horsepower at 7,100 RPM and uh, 395 pounds of torque at 4,800 RPM. This is a spinny, revy motor. Uh, but compared to the 350 F Sport, that's a plus 161 horsepower, plus 115 pound-feet, so quite the jump. Uh, it's rear-wheel drive only with a mechanical Torsen limited slip differential. Uh, the E limited slip differential from the RCF is not available. Eight-speed automatic gearbox, paddle shifters. The suspension architecture, like the 350, is a double wishbone front and a multi-link rear with adaptive shocks and a new Yamaha rear chassis damper. That's like a shock that runs along the, the body. It's a horizontal shock. Interesting uh, piece of hardware. Uh, big brake kit for the 500, 14-inch fronts, two-piece, 12.7-inch uh, rears. Um, we got 19-inch Enkai lightweight forged alloy wheels with 235 front and 265 rear max performance summer bridge stones. You've got the 1800-watt uh, Mark Levinson 17-speaker stereo. Now with a touch screen up here, Thank God, the touchpad remains, but we're not using it anymore. We're only using the menu and back buttons, everything else, including the car play and all that, right through the touch screen. That is the, the jam. Uh, compared to an IS350, the V8 and its subsequent hardware adds 148 pounds, which puts it right around 3,900 and about 50 pounds lighter than the RCF. Uh, there is no augmented sound electronically through the Mark Levinson stereo, but there is, like the other uh, V8 Lexus models, a tube plumbing the intake, uh, mechanical tube, right onto the firewall. So you're going to hear uh, what that sounds like as we have a go. We're going to go manual and adjust our dynamic uh, control to Sport Plus. Here we go. Immediately. 
exactly it's where you want to be. Because it's not just that it's a V8, it's that it's this V8. This V8 is very, very good. Ever since it was first launched, uh, the early generation in the ISF and then the RCF and then the, I, uh, the LC500, it is a gem. It has a beautiful amount of engagement. Uh, it's responsive to both throttle uh, inputs and uh, gear changes. And everything about this is no, very similar to what we saw in the GSF a couple years ago, which is one of the best sleeper sedans out there, if you ask me. The power is very linear. Uh, it also happens up high, which means you got to be going quick or you got to be in a low gear. This thing has pretty long legs um, and, a, and a high red line at, at over, uh, it's about 7,400 RPM. So in order to use that torque, which is up at 4,800 or your peak power, you got to spin it, which on this road means a lot of second gear. The brakes are good. Uh, because it's so early, because it's uh, this car doesn't come out for a couple months, a couple important figures I'm missing. One is the weight distribution, how that uh, is affected by the V8. I can say that it feels oh, reasonably balanced uh, with a pretty good strong turn in and despite only having 235 section front tires, it's got a pretty nice amount of grip up there. You, know, you might think about the fact that a, a fast Mustang is running like 285s or 305s up there. So this with a 235 means it's much more relaxed. Your ultimate grip will be a little lower than something like that, but it's relaxed. It's not affected by ruts in the road, uh, by it doesn't tram line, and that's good. A car like this, you really want a relaxed drive. The ride, you've got adaptive shocks, but the, the, the window that they adapt in is small. It's not like the Mercedes and the BMW where you go from very, very soft to very, very stiff in the M and the AMG cars. I think this not being an F car, they've tuned it a little more for comfort. They've given you that power and that engine feel that we've been asking for with the V8, but the suspension feels like it's set up for everyday use with the occasional blast through a canyon and not a Nürburgring record time. I'm going to chalk that one up as a point for and not a point against. The knob and the drive modes, it, it changes the feel a little bit. Uh, it changes the throttle response, it changes when it shifts, but in terms of the shocks, you really have to be on a bumpy road to tell the difference. On good tarmac, it's not much difference. I love the steering ratio. I love the size of the car. I love the fact that there are fewer F badges on it. It's actually an unbelievable sleeper in any other color besides this. Uh, the only way to tell that this has the V8 is from the special wheels, the brakes through them, the bulge on the hood, and the quad exhaust tips. Everything else looks the same. It blends as a sleeper. There's some body roll up in these corners, which I like. Uh, a little bit of body roll, the right amount of body roll, means that if it's going to break loose, when it's going to break loose, it'll happen in a more forgiving way. Flat handling is good, but when, it, when a flat handling car breaks loose, it snaps. Body roll is very smooth. The engine is the right sound. Oh yes, that is the right sound. One thing I really like about Lexus is uh, the V8 cars. Look at turning radiuses. Look at this. It's I do have to three-point it. I picked a particularly narrow spot, but but very good turning radiuses in the Lexuses. Down the hill we go. You kind of have to leave it in Sport or Sport Plus all the time. That's why it's okay that it doesn't ride too stiff because the normal or the eco throttle response on this engine is no bueno. 
you don't want that. It's lazy shifting. It feels, the way it changes gears is, it's so mushy that Zach and I both, like, thought the transmission was, like, slipping or something. It's it's weird how it does it, but the fast, the, the higher you ratchet up the drive mode, the more crisp the shifts are. They don't ever get abusive, and they don't have that engineered kick like Lamborghini does, but you can, it's just more crisp, like this, mmm, that's good. It, you, can, you can feel it give it that snap. That's what you want, is that crisp snap. I realize that this tight and technical and a little bit bumpy road is not exactly perfect for the, the IS, which probably would be the most at home on some open sweepers. But I went to a road with open sweepers, and there was a construction crew all over it. And um, it, I guess that just wasn't in the cards today, folks. Sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. But the good news is, even in a suboptimal, bumpy and tight road, I'm having a good time. There's plenty of grip, plenty of brake. The key is that the mental exercise is actually be in the lower gear. Because your brain sometimes thinks you should be shifting up substantially before the engine has actually run out of revs. The sound, really, really nice. There's an adjustable shift light on your dash. Someone has adjusted it poorly for me, so the thing keeps, the tachometer keeps turning red at 5,000 RPM. I would reset that to seven, but I forgot to do it. I can read, so there's no point in doing it now. And I can tell you that when it turns red, it's a beautiful color. It's a nice, like, it's more like pumpkin orange than red. I like. We're really making good work of second gear here. The diff is good. You know, if you're not at a high enough revs, you know, and you're used to the turbo engines, it could be like, come on already. But, oof. The sound, the effortless low-speed torque when you're cruising around that doesn't sort of have that weird peakiness like the turbo motors, this is all very good stuff. Mm. This color is excellent. A lot to like here, guys. A lot to like. Oh, boy. These NA engines are gonna they're gonna lose some of their efficiency up at around 3,500 feet where we are right now. So the turbo motors are gonna do a little better for themselves in the mountains. But this one is getting us getting us through pretty good. I love the balance. I love the rate of engine braking when you lift. It, it, it holds the car back enough to get a good weight transfer forward. I like that Lexus hasn't really gone and frou-frouted up. I mean, yes, the styling is still fairly extroverted, but it's it's been that way for like seven years. We're used to it at this point. I mean, it's very... I don't know. Maybe it's, maybe it's going to be the Lexus thing to build hot sleepers. Even like outside the car, like it sounds amazing in here, but they've gone out of their way to make it sound great for the people in the car, more so than the people outside the car. Like it sounds nice outside, but it's not really loud. It's not, it's not screaming, hey, look at me. It's focusing that engagement into the cabin. And I like that. That's very cool. I mean, look, this, this is a, um, it's a fabulous package. I don't know what they're going to charge for it yet. I hope, uh, I'm sure by the time uh, this video airs, I'll be able to have a price in the description and, and we'll have a better understanding. But I can't imagine it'll be overpriced. Uh, the interior is simple. Um, it's sort of the same as it's been, but heated and cooled seats with adjustable lumbar are comfortable. The steering wheel's the right size. The paddle shifters are good. The visibility in all directions is good. Um, and it's not this sort of, aside from this beautiful blue color, it's not as extroverted in your face uh, as the BMWs or the AMGs, um, but it, it really does, um, it has the pace, 
And more importantly, in the same way that that Porsche GT3 has maximized the engagement of the NA motor, even though that's not the fastest car they build, um, this, even though it probably could go faster with a twin turbo six, um, I'm glad it has the V8. It, that's That engine is worth finding a way to keep around. So shout out to Lexus for letting me have a go. Um, if you think you might like this car, if you think you, if you like the idea of it, I promise you, you will like the execution. The execution, how does it drive? Like you think it's going to, like a smaller GSF, like a lighter RCF, um, and like a sleepier uh, BMW M3 with a much better sounding engine. So thanks to Lexus for letting me have a go. Thanks to you guys for watching our videos, and we'll see you later. Bye. And remember, always fight your tickets. Use code TST10 on the Off The Record app available in the Android and iOS store, or go to offtherecord.com TST.